Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. Um, if you're new here, I post video tutorials on AWS, Lightcell, Azure, and other easy to set up and use web hosting tools and services. I also post video tutorials on WordPress tips and tricks for developers. So if you are interested in that type of content, please consider subscribing and liking all my videos. Last week, I posted a very long tutorial. I think it was over an hour long video tutorial where I showed you how to set up a clustered WordPress environment using LightCell instances. Recently, AWS LightCell introduced the ability to create content delivery distributions uh, within the LightCell dashboard. Uh, this basically runs on AWS CloudFront underneath. Uh, AWS Cloud CloudFront is the content delivery network uh, capability that you can turn on for caching your static assets, uh, static website assets um, at various edge locations around the world for faster and more efficient delivery of your website to your end users. Now, what AWS has done is taken that complexity and put that into a package on the AWS LightCell platform. Um, and so this is it right here. It's called distribution. It's a content delivery network uh, distribution that speeds up the delivery of content to your users around the world. So they've taken out all the uh, complexity and simplified how you can turn this on for your LightCell instances. So in this week's video, I will show you how to set up LightCell instance and to take advantage of this new feature in AWS LightCell. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is create our WordPress instance. Um, if you already have a WordPress instance, you can use that. If you have a load balancer um, set up, then you can also use your AWS load balancer um, as well. So let's create an instance if you haven't had one. Uh, we will select WordPress and go ahead and hit create instance. And this will take a couple of minutes to provision and be ready for us. Okay, so the instance is ready. Let's go ahead and create a static IP address that we'll need. So the next thing we'll do is come over to go back to the LightCell dashboard, click on networking, and then click on create distribution. And then on this screen, we will choose your LightCell instance. And again, if you had a WordPress or AWS load balancer, that will be selected here as well. If you wanted to put this setup in front of the um, WordPress clustered environment that we set up in my last week's video, then we don't we aren't using an AWS load balancer, but we're using a custom load balancer using Nginx. So you could use that instance here as well. So here we go. And when you select your instance as your origin, um, your, your basically your source webs, uh, web instance, uh, what it's going to notice is it will detect that you have a WordPress instance and it will ask you if you wanted to use a WordPress cache behavior preset. So this is where the simplicity takes uh, comes into play. Um, LightCell has taken um, a lot of the configuration that you would you would normally have to do inside the CloudFront interface, and they've come up with some of these pre-built uh, preset configurations that they will apply to the entire distribution based on the type of website you are running. So the option here is a WordPress uh, WordPress cache behavior preset, and it will perform all the various configurations and settings based on what's best for WordPress. If you have a static website, you could uh, select that preset and it will apply those settings. And if you have another website that's not built on WordPress, but is a dynamic website, perhaps built on uh, another tech uh, framework uh, of PHP or um, any other framework out there that produces a dynamic website, then you could select that type of preset. 
Now what the preset will do, I'll just hit yes, apply here. What the preset will do is, is set up some of these initial settings automatically based on the technology. So for example, we selected WordPress, so it will cache nothing. And then in the overrides section, directory and file overrides, this will provide any kind of exceptions to the default behavior that's specified up here. So if you cache nothing, then what they set up here is go ahead and cache the wp-includes folder and cache wp-content folder and nothing else, right? So uh, this is the optimal settings for WordPress. If you come up here and select another preset, for example, they have the best for dynamic content, it would change those settings based upon one of these presets. Now, if you wanted to um, configure all of this by yourself, you could then select this custom settings and that would allow you to make any of these changes, selections, any of these exceptions that you want to do as far as um, from a directory and file overrides uh, perspective. And then uh, down here, advanced cache settings, you can modify all of these. But since we are going with the WordPress preset, they've set up all of this um, automatically. So we'll go down to the distribution plan. So you want to pick the distribution plan that is appropriate for your website that you feel. Um, now they do have an option, which is the 50 gigabyte plan and it's the first year is free. However, if you, um, on a monthly basis, if you go over the 50 gigabytes, then they will start charging you. So you want to pick the option that best is suitable for your website. So we'll go with the 50 gigabyte plan, hit create distribution. Now this will take several minutes, um, at least in, in my experience, it took uh, somewhere between five and 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Again, behind the scenes, it is setting up the various um, components of AWS CloudFront. Uh, and if you want to learn more about CloudFront, I'll put a link down in the description below that talks about how, to, how it's used and what it does. And, and if you wanted to use CloudFront, you know, those links will lead you to that as well. Okay, so the distribution is set up and enabled. Um, now on this page here, you will see that uh, it shows the origin, your source website selected and your sat static IP as well selected. Um, you can come in here and change your origin at any time. So if you decided to uh, use a different WordPress instance or if it's if you want to take the load balancer out of the picture or anything like that you can come here and change the origin at any time. Uh, another item that you should uh, make sure you have correctly set is the origin protocol policy. So right here by default this is set up as HTTP. So what that means is that the connection between your the distribution service and your WordPress instance that connection and that the request and response that come that go between those two systems will be over HTTP uh, and not HTTPS. Now, if you already have a certificate installed locally on that WordPress instance, then you'll want to come in here and change this option to say HTTPS only. So that's an important configuration. Otherwise, there are parts of your site may not load correctly. Now, if you're setting this up from scratch, and you do not have HTTPS, then leave it this way because the communication or data transferring between your WordPress instance and the distribution service doesn't have to be on HTTPS. Um, that can be HTTP, HTTP because all of that is just within the light cell ecosystem, the AWS ecosystem. The important part of enabling HTTPS is between your end users and the distribution endpoint. So we will set that up as part of this configuration here, but just to make sure that if you do have HTTPS and an SSL certificate installed on your WordPress instance, then you'll want to pick HTTPS here. Otherwise the default option is HTTP if you're setting this up uh, from scratch. So uh, on here, you'll have several tabs. On the cache tab here, you can modify some of the cache settings and behavior settings. So if you wanted to either add more directory file overrides or remove or modify any of these advanced cache settings, you can come over here. And one more option here is to reset the cache. So what you what this option will do is basically delete all the cache that has been stored at the various 
uh, distribution endpoints or edge locations and it will clear that out and that's good if you are making some major modifications to your website uh, for example you know switching out an entire theme you know so you would probably want to come in here and reset the cache because the theme files a lot of those static files JavaScript CSS images a lot of that would be cached so you'll you'll want to come in here and reset the cache when you make some major changes like that otherwise the cache will get reset um, on a daily basis based on the um, cache settings right here that every day the cache will get updated next we'll come over to custom domains this is where we will configure a uh, our own domain to um, to connect to the distribution. Right here it will say custom domains are disabled and that's because it needs a SSL certificate initially configured. Now part of the distribution cost they do give you a free SSL certificate. So if you come down here click on create certificate and then type in your uh, domain name that you want to use and in this scenario I will use mukesh.me and then an alternate domain name would be www.mukesh.me and then once you have that set up click on create and here we are so the next step here is that it needs to validate that we actually own the domain that we are setting up the SSL for so here we have to create two CNAME records for the validation one for the uh, root domain mukesh.me and the second one for the www.mukesh.me so these CNAME values will go into your DNS registrar the, the um, location where you can modify your DNS records uh, for me that will be name.com okay so here we go I've logged into my DNS management section of name.com and so we will need to create these two entries CNAME entries for validation so let's copy the first one copy the name come over to name.com need to create a c name paste this and since name.com already um, appends the mukesh.me domain i will need to remove that here and then let's get the value add record Let's add the second entry. Okay, so I have both of the CNAME validation records added to my domain record. And um, at this point, I guess AWS will ping my DNS system again and validate that those CNAME records are there and then let me proceed to the next step. So we'll just give this a few minutes um, and I'll come back when it's done and we'll start the next step. Okay, our certificate has been validated, verified, and it's ready for us to use. So once that's done, let's come back up here and we will turn on the custom domains option. So enable that switch right there and we have custom domains enabled now this still won't work we need to do one final step which is uh, setting up our root domain in this case mukesh.me and the www.mukesh.me to point to our new distribution so for that we're going to modify the dns records one more time and what we will do is right here you'll you'll see that once you turned on the distribution this gave us a cloudfront domain to set up as so let's copy this right here and head on over to our uh, dns management tool whatever it is for you and let's create the entries so first we'll do a c name and we'll type in www this is for www.mukesh.me and that will point to the distribution and keep in mind this has to be a CNAME record now the second one for the root domain we will use a feature called a name now not all uh, registrars and DNS service providers support this 
but if yours does then you will use a name for your root domain if you if your domain registrar does not provide it then you will have to set up some sort of a redirect to point the root domain back to www. you know mukesh.me and send that so for the root domain we will leave that blank and we'll again type in or paste in the CloudFront address and add the record. So you should have an A name for your root domain pointing to the CloudFront distribution and a C name www.mukesh.me and pointing that to the CloudFront distribution. So once this is set up, we should be able to pull up the website. So let's try to do that. And here we go. So our website is coming up, but it doesn't look very good. And the reason for that is we don't have the um, last step applied yet. So now we're going to go to the last step that will fix all of this. So let's go back to the light cell dashboard. Go to your WordPress instance and then SSH into it. What we're going to do is modify the WP config. We need to add a snippet of code in there that will make all of this work. My install is inside apps. And then WP config. Here we go. And come down right here. And we will add that snippet of code. Hit insert and paste it and basically what this is uh, what this code is doing is saying that if a request comes in through CloudFront then apply HTTPS and uh, turn on HTTPS as your response so this here will fix any of these style sheets uh, JavaScript files any of those from uh, breaking and not loading as what we see here so go ahead and save and exit out of your WP config. Now if we go back to our site and reload, we should have all the necessary files loaded for the site to render correctly. How do we test that CloudFront is working or distribution service is working? You right click and go into your DevTools, browser DevTools, then click on the network tab right here and then refresh your site. And then you'll see you can pick, for example, uh, this image, PNG image. And what you'll see here is you're looking for two items. First one you're looking for is this right here, Xcache. And you can say it, see that it's a refresh hit from CloudFront. That means that the CloudFront um, service, uh, our distribution service, served that file. It did not get served from your WordPress instance. You can look at some of these other ones. Let's look at our, not that one. Let's try which one. Are we looking for a CSS file? Let's see. Go here. Okay, here we go. Uh, the style sheet, which is uh, a common style sheet that, or a standard style sheet that gets uh, developed as part of the WordPress theme style.css and you'll notice here that the hit from CloudFront is present and the, the other one that you're looking for um, is right here CloudFront ID and also right here you can see that this is something that's being served up by CloudFront so this is how you can verify that files are being served by either CloudFront or they're being served up by your Word, uh, WordPress instance. And that's it, folks. Um, if you found this useful, give it the video a thumbs up, share it with others who you think might find this useful as well. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And uh, until the next video, take care.